Hello everybody. I haven't done a Thoughts on the Road in a little while, and it's January 2020. So, uh, hey, what about that? The first one of the uh, new year. So, what's been going on? Uh, well, updates. Um, the call sign pirate video from a little while back was kind of a popular one. Controversial too, I guess. A lot of people were like, uh, um, don't play nice, you know, slam the door on them. I understand that point of view, uh, but uh, anyway, uh, updates. Well, I've been in contact with uh, some of the people up there in that area, and uh, pretty much ever since that video came out, uh, Ray, or whatever his name is, has gone silent. So the problem seems to have resolved itself. Um, I kind of secretly would like to think that perhaps he saw the video and got scared straight. Who knows? But regardless, um, he's gone silent. He's uh, no longer on the air with my call sign up there. So I guess that's the important part. Uh, what else is going on? Well, let's see. Uh, it's January. It's the dead of winter, which down here in the desert translates to uh, nights uh, in the mid-40s Celsius or Fahrenheit. Celsius. I'll put that up here somewhere. Uh, mid-40s uh, Fahrenheit. Uh, daytimes are uh, getting up into the mid to upper 60s. Uh, if it's a nice calm day without wind, it actually gets quite warm inside the RV, up to about 80 degrees in a couple of days, which is where I'm getting comfortable. So uh, it's it's been totally, uh, totally livable. Um, the first uh, full winter that I've been able to avoid winter pretty much. Uh, grew up in Michigan, spent most of my life in Indiana, so uh, this I can deal with this. It's cold in the morning. Uh, but that's okay. I've been able to get by without burning a lot of propane for heat, and uh, and that's made a huge difference in how many times I have to transport the RV and to get more propane. There's other ways to do that. Um, a lot of guys here use those propane cylinders and space heaters, uh, which I might consider, but that's just more stuff to carry. And uh, if I can deal with the chilly mornings and still get the uh, comfortable afternoons, I'm okay with that. You know, I just put more coats on, clothes on in the morning, you know, that's fine. So uh, dealing with winter, with winter down here in southwest Arizona has been uh, quite doable. Now this, as I understand it, is a mild year. It has been colder in past years, um, even getting below freezing. So uh, yeah, um, this is a mild year, but for me it's the first, actually the first year in my life, I think, that I will be getting through winter without uh, seeing temperatures below freezing. And uh, I like it. Uh, it is January 8th. Uh, Quartz Fest is coming up in about a week and a half. The big event. Um, when I originally left in the RV, Quartz Fest was one of my goals, which I missed last year, of course, because of the death of my father. Uh, so I, I'm going to be there. And uh, I've got the panel to host of YouTube, Hammer, YouTube Ham Radio guys. That's still on, still have the same participants. I think that's gonna be good. Uh, hopefully I can do it. You see, I'm, I'm the kind of guy that keeps to himself. Um, large groups of people have always been uncomfortable for me. Uh, it's gonna be probably one of the toughest things that I've ever done um, just because of that, you know? And, and so I'm gonna get through it. We're gonna do it, we're gonna pull it off. And uh, hopefully we'll uh, gather lots and lots of footage at Quartz Fest to show you uh, Quartz Fest uh, to show you um, the event, the area, what's going on, the uh, other RVers. Maybe you talk to a bunch of people. Uh, maybe film a few interesting things that are happening there with the uh, the Ham Fest area. You know, the presentation area, maybe the, the the nightly campfire that they have. You know, different stuff. I'll I'll try to to represent the event as best I can with a series of videos afterwards. And of course, uh, the panel uh, will be recorded by multiple sources. I'm sure everybody on the panel is gonna have their own cameras set up and, and hopefully we can exchange media so that we all have plenty of footage to put together videos on it. Uh, so, you know, there'll, there'll be lots and lots of media from Quartz Fest. Uh, I'm gonna have to start getting ready to go um, next week. I'm going down early. Uh, I'm going to be riding down with a couple of other people from here, uh, or riding up to uh, the site on uh, Wednesday, I think. Uh, we're going to get there a few days early and probably help them set up and shoot some some pre-event stuff before the event really gets started. 
Uh, as far as antennas at Quartz Fest, I've been thinking about that a lot. Originally, I was thinking I'd put up another mast there. Um, I have another mast to look at that was sent to me by uh, Terry. Thanks again, Terry. Uh, but uh, what I'm learning from talking to other people is that the event is quite crowded. Um, RVs will be stacked side by side, just, you know, over... over the area is kind of big, but there's going to be over a thousand people there and, and who knows how many RVs, uh, you know, five, 600. So it, it's going to be really, really packed. And I don't see how I could put up a mast and like the doublet, there just won't be room for it. And honestly, I don't think I'm going to have a lot of time to just play radio while I'm there. Uh, there's going to be so much going on. I'll be spending the days, um, talking to people and filming and spending the evenings trying to organize all that media. Um, that's a lot of work. The work, a lot of the work in doing a video is shooting the media and then organizing it, um, getting it all, getting all the clips named, uh, figuring out what order they need to be in, in the video, um, processing all the audio, going through and normalizing the levels, you know, and making sure it's clear and, and, uh, editing out any abrupt loud clicks and pops or sounds, you know, like when I, when I work at the desk here, and I set down a tool on the on the desk, that clunk that the tool makes is always a huge spike in the audio. And I have to go in and, and, and manually compress that, just that spike down. And there might be 20 or 30 of those over a clip if I'm working at the bench or working on something, you know. So there's a lot of audio processing that has to take place. So every, every evening at Quartz Fest, I'm going to be spending a lot of time doing that, trying to edit maybe a video or two while I'm there to, to release while I'm there. Um, but I suspect a lot of the stuff from Quartz Fest are going to come in the in the weeks following Quartz Fest uh, before you'll see them on the channel because it's just going to be a lot of work to do. Uh, so yeah, it's going to be a very busy week and uh, a very busy uh, week or two following Quartz Fest as I go through and, and edit and produce those videos. And then there's the Yuma Ham Fest um, coming up in early February. And I'm going to go to that and probably shoot that too. So yeah, it's a busy period of time. Uh, I'm looking forward to after the Yuma Ham Fest, when the temperatures are warming back up, uh, going back up to uh, the quartzite area to my uh, my secret spot, and my, my, my quiet place where I can go and camp by myself for a while and, and just decompress. And I'll be doing that. But I'll still produce a video or two while I'm there, uh, as I always do. So yeah, that's what's going on. Uh, it's been kind of nice down here in the desert outside of Yuma. Uh, it's really getting kind of crowded now. I guess I'll go outside and just do a panorama for you so you can see all the RVs that are out here. Um, there's quite a few and it's a very large area. Uh, they're just they're just camped. I'm at the sort of the back edge of it and the direction where you see all the RVs is up towards 95 or up towards... Uh, uh, Imperial Dam Road or Senator's Wash Road, uh, and that's the busier area. There's just a ton of RVs out here. It's 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 really packed, uh, but they're still spread out. You know, I've still got room for my antenna farm, <laughs> and uh, you know we each do out here. Um, Keith over across the way has a full wave 80 meter loop that spans one of the washes. You know, and then James has three towers up with uh, different antennas on them. Uh, and some of the other people out here have other antennas up, you know, a distance from their rig. I've seen there's hams all over out here, uh, and we all talk. Uh, every night we have a net on uh, uh, Simplex on two meters. Uh, and uh, events that go on throughout the weeks and the days uh, get talked about and announced on air. Uh, citizens band radios are used quite heavily out here, and uh, it's not the noise like you're, you're used to thinking of when you think of CB back in the day when it was everybody was just screaming at each other. No, it's, it's actually used uh, very much like a conventional uh, communications channel out here, channel 12. Uh, they have an organized net themselves every night. They call it check-in, uh, where a big group of them all check in, and, and uh, then they have announcements of what's coming up over the next couple, couple of days, you know, and that's kind of neat to, to listen to and, and learn about. Uh, and they have all kinds of events that they do. Uh, today there's a Jeep ride. A whole bunch of people um, with off-road Jeeps have gone off into the hills, you know, and they're going to explore sites, old abandoned mines, um, something that's in this area called the Names or the Valley of the Names uh, is really interesting. You can actually see it from Google Earth and I'll, I'll put a link to the 
to the uh, site on Google Earth uh, in the description below so you can check it out. But here's a quick view of it. Uh, and you can see where people have gone out there and they've used rocks to arrange them and to make big, huge names that uh, are, well, in this case, are visible from space with the uh, Google satellites or the imaging satellites. You know, you can see them. Uh, so it's a huge area where people go out and they put tributes and, and names of, of loved ones or themselves or their pets, you know, or, <laughs> or whatever. That's the value of the names. There's all kinds of sites like that out here. Um, there's old mines abandoned mines that you can go and visit. Uh, the dangerous ones will be shored up and, and blocked off, but uh, there's other sites. We went to visit one and walked around a little bit and uh, saw a lot of interesting things there and uh, interesting mineral samples on the ground, uh, ore samples and stuff. Uh, so yeah, there's lots of places to see and, and drive to. So they have Jeep rides. Uh, they have four by four rides where a big convoy of people with those little four by four razors and, and um, small vehicles go off on the rougher trails and roads way up into the hills to different places. Uh, there's Native American uh, ruins uh, that you can see and visit, uh, caves where they lived. Um, I haven't seen one of those yet myself, but others have talked about it. Uh, so yeah, there's lots of interesting things for them to go and see out here in the Arizona desert. And they do that. Um, they have events down at, a, uh, there's a Christian center nearby that's uh, sort of a an extended camp with uh, some buildings and they have a an official post office there that's where i get my mail uh and they have uh, like a um a, a flea market type building there and uh, a notary public and other services uh so you know there's there's that and they they have classes um like there's a spanish class that several people have been going to learning spanish that's taught by a, a french guy um, as i understand it he's uh, originally french uh, and he's camped um, not too far from here. We've driven by his site, and there was he had the French flag underneath the uh, um, American flag. You know, kind of cool. Uh, lots of people from other uh, areas out here, too. There's lots of Canadians that come down here to avoid their winters. Uh, uh, lots of campers from all over the country are out here. Um, but the neat thing is, uh, you know, a lot of those borders dissolve. Uh, and once they're here they're part of another community. This, this RVer, full-time um, RVer and uh, snowbird, the people that, that avoid winters by coming south, uh, they all sort of form their own community. So it's like a whole different family here and everybody watches out for everybody else. Um, people leave solar panels out and, and, and such. And in general, nobody messes with you. Uh, nobody messes with anybody else's stuff. You know, everybody looks out for everybody. So it's, it's like a whole different community. It's kind of cool. And I've been enjoying it, uh, being here. Lots of people to talk to, and it's friendly. But I've been getting a little stir-crazy, so I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to Quartz Fest for that, for a chance to, to move for a little bit. You know, I'll be coming back down here um, uh, then until the Yuma Ham Fest in February, and when the temperatures go up, I'll probably head back up to my spot for a while. And then when it gets too hot, I'll uh, head on up to uh, uh, my friend Tony's property up in Kingman, and try to figure out what I'm going to do as far as going back east to visit my, my friends and uh, family, which I haven't seen for a year now. So, uh, yeah. yeah, that's that's far future, though. Immediately, uh, Quartz Fest uh, next week, it starts a week from Sunday or Saturday? Uh, Sunday. It starts a week from Sunday. It is Wednesday. And uh, next week, we'll be getting everything packed up and ready to go and leaving Wednesday to head up to Quartzsite. Uh, I'm going to take down the uh, big 60-foot mast next week before I, before I move. I'm not going to leave it up down here for a week without me here uh, and the doublet. But I'm going to leave the stake in the ground. Um, what, I, what was I talking about? Antennas. Uh, up in Quartzfest, uh, like I said, it's going to be too crowded to put up a mast. Uh, so I'll probably just put the chameleon whip up on the back of the RV. That gets me okay on 40 meters and pretty good on 20 meters and up through six. Uh, so I'll just put the one antenna on the RV so I have something when I'm up there. But when I come back from Quartz Fest, uh, I'm going to put up that other mast that Terry sent me and probably put the doublet off of it as the main antenna uh, and maybe uh, do some other things with it, put up the... Uh, I might put up the little uh, portable antenna that I made in the uh, video looking at the elk pack kit 
uh, just to profile it and play with it a little bit and maybe get a small radio out and set up outside as if I was portable. You know, maybe do a video on that. Yeah, but I'll, I'll have that other mast up so I'll be able to pull things up. You know, I'll have a rope up the side so I can pull things up and drop them down and, and change antennas around for the next few weeks that I'll be here before uh, before we head north in, in probably mid to late February. So that's what's going on. Uh, yeah, things are getting ready to get busy and uh, going to be really busy for a little bit. So, so I guess I've talked long enough. Uh, that's it for this Thoughts on the Road uh, vlog, a video log, and uh, we'll uh, see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.